Good evening and welcome to today's tropics for September 12th, 2020. Please note I'm not a meteorologist and this video is just a collection of my thoughts and opinions about the storms I'm talking about. And for any decision making, please consult the National Hurricane Center or your local officials. So uh, the Atlantic is uh, getting quite busy uh, as, as you tend to see uh, during peak season, but it, uh, getting uh, really busy now. Uh, we have uh, four tropical cyclones uh, currently active and two areas uh, to watch, one of which I'm looking at. Uh, first off, here is Tropical Storm Sally, which is currently uh, just entering the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, next up, I'll be looking at uh, Tropical Storm Paulette, which is uh, en route to Bermuda. Uh, next is Tropical Depression Renee, which uh, isn't looking too well still. Uh, Tropical Depression 20, which is currently in the uh, Eastern Atlantic, uh, or Eastern Main Development Region. And finally, uh, Invest 97L, which is uh, generally nearer over the Cabo Verde Islands. So let's take, first take a look at Tropical Storm Sally. So uh, the convection does look a little impressive, but it, it isn't super uh, well organized right now. Uh, the low-level center is a bit more than north per recon, and some uh, observations from the satellite uh, this evening. So it is a little decoupled, and that's because of that northwesterly shear from an upper low to the north, and that is uh, ever so slightly shearing Sally, and so it, uh, that is hindering some organization right now. Uh, the main impact right in, uh, at this moment uh, is some rain over Florida and uh, in the Florida Keys. And uh, so there is a risk of flooding uh, as it passes. Uh, if you look at there are, uh, other parts of the radar here to the west, uh, looking just pretty far up, uh, given how far it is from the uh, radar site, the mid-level center is a bit further to the south than the low-level center, which is uh, found to be a bit more uh, west, or a bit more to the north, uh, generally w uh, west of Marco Island, but it's probably kind of a bit uh, more to the west-northwest, given the, uh, given the low-level flow. So it isn't quite super organized right now, uh, but it does look like it'll have the chance to in the next couple of days. So as Sally heads more out to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, that upper low will uh, go away and likely make the upper level flow a little bit more favorable for the storm uh, coming a bit more out of the uh, east or out of the east instead of uh, northwest or so. However, uh, at the same time, you're also going to have less inflow from the Florida Peninsula, which is also hindering it. So it definitely looks like it'll get better organized and ramp up then. However, uh, there is a possibility for some sneaky um, westerly mid-level shear uh, as it is in the Gulf. And I'll just see if that interrupts the storm, because uh, if it can get a, or an inner core like the h wharf shows, it could uh, ramp up as it heads towards uh, southeastern Louisiana in this run. Uh, uh, may, may or may not go in that area, but if it can get uh, inner core, I might be able to uh, ramp up despite this. And uh, this is what the HWARF model does. It's a high-end solution, so uh, definitely don't look at it as if it were gospel. Uh, the, so it's well above the National Hurricane Center uh, forecast. And as it gets closer to the coast, however, It'll start turning a bit more north uh, as the trough starts to uh, erode the ridge and cause Sally to move a bit more north. Uh, at the same time, you're going to have a low level or mid level flow and uh, upper a lot of upper level flow becoming a lot more westerly again. So you're going to have sheer ramp up as uh, as Sally gets closer to the coast. And along with slower speeds and less uh, ocean heat content with shallow waters, it does seem that you're going to have uh, stuff like upwelling and shear start to bring the storm down. It might start to weaken at this point, but it's probably going to be too late to weaken it a whole lot. But we'll have to see if we can actually get an inner core first, in which case then it does look like it'll uh, likely be a stronger storm. 
As for track, there is a or there is a mid level or, or there is a trough trying to dig down to the southern United States, and what this is going to do is it's going to try to uh, erode the ridging that's steering uh, Sally to the west northwest, and that will mean uh, as it starts hitting that western edge that's been er uh, eroding, it'll likely turn a bit more to the north towards the coast. And at the same time, it'll start slowing down. So that, that obviously uh, presents a few risks. Uh, looking at the National Hurricane Center uh, or official forecast, it, you can see that as it gets closer to the coast, it starts to turn a bit more north and slows down. Uh, and it does forecast for it to be a hurricane. There are hurricane watches up, so uh, be prepared for the wind, but there are, is also going to be risk from flooding as it is a rather slow moving storm and you tend to get uh, a lot of rain from slow moving storms. So you could get some flooding from this as it passes by and at, th at the same time you could get some uh, uh, possibly up to uh, 8 to 10 feet of surge in the area as it passes by and with it moving kind of slowly that uh, surge might be prolonged, so definitely, uh, definitely a large flooding risk from flooding and or from rain and surge. Uh, and there's some wind threat. Well, to see if uh, there's any track changes, such as some sort of reef, uh, reformation to the south, uh, given the northwesterly shear and its displacement between the middle level and low level centers. Uh, and we'll have to see if it tries to ramp up earlier or struggles to, uh, but definitely a possibly dangerous storm coming into the northern Gulf Coast uh, around Louis eastern Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, uh, yeah, generally Tuesday. So uh, definitely keep an eye on this and uh, do, do be preparing for this as it uh, approaches the shore. Next up, let's take a look at Tropical Storm Paulette. It's been suffering from some shear the past few days, and that is uh, still occurring. There's some southerly shear that's um, interrupting the uh, structure a bit so that the middle of eye feature and low level center isn't quite uh, totally coupled, but they're not too far, and the shear is starting to lower. One thing uh, to note is it's trying to uh, rotate convection up shear, and that tends to be a sign that shear is getting lower and the storm is getting stronger. Uh, we, finally, we finally have recon in the storm, and it shows that's a little stronger than the uh, National Hurricane Center was expect or was estimating. Uh, instead, it's about five or six millibars lower in pressure, and uh, and or however, the wind isn't. Uh, a whole lot different. There are hurricane force uh, flight level winds, but there's lower uh, SFMR winds, which suggests that it's probably around uh, 60 knots, but on the cusp of hurricane status. And uh, as it starts to uh, rotate further along this upper low on the northern side, you'll have a lot of easterly flow loft. And given that the cyclone is moving in generally similar direction to that. It's going, uh, shear is going to be a lot lower, and this will be when uh, Paulette is most likely to start intensifying in earnest and uh, could become uh, cl close to a major hurricane uh, after it passes Bermuda. Uh, it does seem to be a major threat uh, for it on the official National Hurricane Center forecast for the storm. I uh, see Bermuda right here in the middle of the cone. There's a hurricane warning, and uh, be prepared for it. Uh, it's an expected uh, intensifying category two hurricane, maybe even a little stronger than that if you have interests or are in this region. Uh, so any preparations for the storm should be uh, rushed, rushed to completion because the conditions will likely start to deteriorate even in the net, uh, in about 24 hours as it approaches, it does look like early Monday morning uh, Eastern time, it will start to uh, approach Bermuda and uh, possibly, or make its closest approach or even possible landfall. So uh, prepare for the worst, so uh, more intense system than, than is expected, but 
uh, prepare for the best or something a little weak or possibly, but uh, again, do be or do be prepared for this storm as well. Next up, let's take a look at Tropical Depression Renee. So it continues to be unimpressive and struggle to produce much convection. You can see the low level center here, uh, or generally the rotation, and there is a little bit of convective bursting, but there isn't really anything organized in it. It's similar to the past few days where it just can't generate much convection at all. And for that reason, it's been downgraded to a tropical depression since there isn't a whole lot to bring stronger winds down to the surface. Now it's a it, uh, window for intensification that's pretty much squandered is pretty much gone now because you can see that there is a, a northwesterly uh, wind aloft or aloft uh, or more west northwesterly that is probably going to start shearing it pretty soon and that will uh, disallow pretty much any strengthening which isn't really expected anymore uh, so it doesn't seem that it'll really get much stronger it'll probably still head northwest uh Looking at the official National Hurricane Center uh, forecast for the storm, it's likely to continue heading on its current uh, heading. However, uh, middle of a ridge building that is expected to uh, steer Paulette to the uh, north and eventually to the east with a uh, long wave trough, uh, Rene will be caught on the other side of this and probably head more. Uh, east to uh, or west to southwest, southwest. And given the shear, it's probably not going to have a hard time maintaining much of any convection. And that means it may become a uh, remnant low, but given that the waters are generally warm there, it could remain tropical cyclone, but it doesn't really matter because there is really no threat to land. It should stay pretty far from land in the foreseeable future. So definitely, uh, uh, no one other than shipping interests should be too worried about the storm, really, especially given that it's weak. Now let's take a look at Tropical Depression 20. So this one ju uh, just formed today. It managed to separate itself from uh, 90, or Invest 97L, and so it's been able to organize a bit. You can see the well-defined low-level circulation and some uh, convection that suggests some banding to the west of that. And so uh, it has organized enough and it, uh, it'll continue moving generally uh, west-northwestward from here for a little while. And uh, you, one thing to note though right now is uh, if you didn't notice already, there is some easterly shear and this is pretty normal for uh, active season or active hurricane seasons in this part of the basin uh, just because tropical easterly jet. So it is a bit shear now, but that should reduce and uh, uh, Tropical Depression 20 should get a bit stronger. Uh, you can see that it situates itself in a pretty favorable environment uh, early next week, it looks like, and that'll like, allow it to strengthen in earnest. And uh, one piece of good news so far is uh, there's been a lot of trending offshore uh, from any of the uh, Caribbean islands here uh, due to some troughing that is going to uh, weaken the ridging over it or over 20 and that will allow it to turn a bit north uh it is we are we are getting into mid-september so it's harder to maintain uh, a lot of ridging over the uh tropical atlantic so it's harder to get storms to actually impact land when they form this far east so hopefully this trend continues but uh maybe just keep a wary eye in case something uh, really weird happens but Definitely seems that things are trending a bit more, uh, not or a bit more towards uh, it curving out to sea. Looking at the national or official National Hurricane Center uh, forecast for Tropical Depression 20, it does indeed do this, uh, having it go generally north or west northwest until it starts feeling more troughiness and heading more to the northwest and heading north of the islands, well east of them. So. Hopefully, uh, or this looks like some good news uh, against what was uh, possible a few days ago where uh, impacts for the islands were possible. And uh, you can see that it does strengthen here with a favorable environment. So uh, it does look likely that uh, it won't get too far 
uh, too close to them, but hopefully we do see this continue. And finally, let's take a look at Invest 97L. So it, it's another monsoonal type uh, system that could form into a tropical depression soon. Uh, it, you can see the some of the circulation or uh, beginnings of circulation that is here where you have the usual southwesterly winds uh, in the monsoonal zone and then some more uh, northeasterly winds that are part of the trade wind flow. So uh, there, it is possible that a tropical depression might form here soon. Uh, luckily, probably not many, or probably no land impacts except for right now. We're having some scattered convection around the Cabo Verde Islands, causing some rain, uh, which could cause flooding. But uh, it does look like it should go generally northwest and encounter some uh, westerly shear, uh, similarly to Rene. And that should keep it a uh, system that, after it passes by the Cabo Verde Islands, that should keep it from having any major land impacts, luckily. Uh, there isn't too much else, or, or that, there isn't too much else to talk about except for a low chance uh, circulation in the Gulf of Mexico, but it doesn't seem that it'll amount to too much in the dryer at this point. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions or comments about my video, please let me know. Thanks for watching.